Position Video Content as a 24-7 sales rep for your business. It essentially acts as a sales rep for your company. You want customer testimonial videos. Now all of a sudden, you're not having to sell. It's your best customers that are telling the story about what they went through and the transformation they had. I can constantly get in front of prospects and customers and just provide straight value. Welcome to the Press One for Nick podcast. My name is Nick Wimsall. My guest this week is Alex Sheridan. He is the founder of Impacts Marketing. It is a video content training company. And Alex has helped hundreds of companies build their online brands and attract their dream clients through engaging video content. Alex is also a proud father of two daughters and calls the Chicago suburbs his home. And for those who don't know, just a quick recap, and I, I kind of shared with them a little bit, but I've been creeping on this fella for years and he's putting out some awesome content for, but before you, before we get into this, I want everybody to hit pause real quick, go to his LinkedIn profile and search, add, follow, share, like his content and just start streaming everything that he's doing. And you'll realize why I'm saying all of this after this episode. So without further ado, Alex, welcome to the press one for Nick podcast. Excited to be here, man. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, you bet, man. And so I guess the first thing that I kind of want to start off is, you know, there's there's a lot that happens behind the scenes. It's not just what I call the pixie dust and fairy tales. It's not this amazing, uh, amazing technology, the amazing content that you're always also putting out. You know, how did it how did it start out for you? I'm I'm guessing, like everybody, you put out content. And you hit live and you're like, all right, everybody's going to join me now. Nope. No likes, no views. Okay. So what do I do next? But share, share your, your journey with us. Just a, a quick synopsis. Yeah. Everyone starts with zero followers, you know, regardless of, I mean, it doesn't matter what platform you're on or what you start. You, everyone starts from the same place. So I always like to preface it with that, but you know, for me, it was like, I think what happened before I started creating video content was, was I had this unlock moment, which was because I was in B2B sales for 10 years. And I started to kind of see the writing on the wall where I was like, man, it's getting harder to reach prospects. You had COVID happening. So people weren't in the office as much. More people were being brought on to social media and places like LinkedIn. More consumers and customers were consuming video content. In fact, our video content consumption had doubled uh, in just four years from 2018 to 2022. So it was like all these things were happening, right? And I was and I was watching YouTube videos and LinkedIn stuff and Instagram stuff, you know, and I was starting to get educated and learn things from these videos. And so I think you need to have that unlock moment where you say, video has the opportunity to transform my business and my life. And I had that moment in 2019 where I was like, this could be a game changer for me. And so, you know, I started like anyone else would start. I just... I hit record. I started talking about things that I thought was relevant to my audience, to the customers that I wanted to attract. And I was going to be a sales consultant. I was going to do sales training and coaching. That's what I was good at. That's what I knew how to do. That's what I was doing on my full-time job. But what changed even more, fo even more so for me is when I had that unlock moment of, I should start putting out content to like help people be aware of me and show them the problems that they have and how they're solvable. And they'd, they'd see me as the expert, as the thought leader in the industry. When I started putting out those videos, uh, not right away, but over time, I noticed that prospects were actually coming to me. And then I was like, it was another un unlock moment where I was like, wait a second, maybe it's maybe my thing is not the sales training consulting. Maybe it's helping companies grow and scale through video. But um, so that's where I made the change and the pivot in my business. And that's kind of how we are here today. But I think you got to have that moment of realization where you realize that video has that power to impact you and others around you. And then it's about, you got to get started, you know, and everyone starts at different places in terms of what they know or their background, or maybe they've done video before. Maybe you have never made a video, but regardless, your, your willingness to put yourself out there and fail and put a video out there that gets no views or, you know, 25 views or 50 views or zero likes, zero comments. I mean, that was the reality of my videos when I first started putting out content, but your ability to push past that and learn and get better with every video and continue to make content. That's what separates a lot of winners from unfortunately losers. Yeah. I love that. And I love that mindset as well. You know, when it comes to videos, it is a way that you can educate your, 
your audience. And, and I love the way that you mind, you, you had that shift in mindset, not just about, I'm going to be in sales training, but you know, I'm going to find a way to maximize the way that people are telling the story and the way that people are, are sharing the, their value proposition, because it is, it is different than what everybody else is doing. I think what you're doing is different than what everybody else is doing. You know, when it comes to video content, you say that it's a 24 by or 24 by seven sales rep for businesses. You know, tell me more about that and what makes it so effective. So if you position video content as a 24 seven sales rep for your business, it essentially acts as a sales rep for your company. Like if you think about it like this, right. And you got to implement a few things for this really to work well. But if you think about it, like, let's say you've got your website, right? So someone's going to your website. So what do you want on your website? You want somebody essentially selling for you. And it's not necessarily that they're talking all about the products and services and that kind of stuff. Some of it might be that, but you'd want customer testimonial videos. So now all of a sudden you're not having to sell. It's your best customers that are telling the story about what they went through and the transformation they had and the positive results they got from working with you. That's all acting while you're sleeping, while you're at lunch, while you're spending time with the kids, while you're in, your, in the business, working with your team. This is all happening. Customers are going through this buyer journey process. And again, some of it's they land on your website. They're hearing from your customers. They're seeing more videos from you, right? In the first place. And maybe it's strategy, tactical stuff, whatever it might be. And then they're going on the social media feeds, right? And what are they doing? They're scrolling on LinkedIn. They're scrolling on TikTok. They're searching for stuff on YouTube. And so your ability to, to be there and almost like prospect in the feed a little bit, even though, again, you're not selling your products and services and your content, but you're providing so much value and demonstrating that you are an expert in this field and you know how to get people results because you're telling stories, you're providing strategies and tactics and tips and techniques. And so you're catching a lot of attention and people are, again, are seeing you as this person that could help solve their problems. And that's essentially what a salesperson would do. They would outreach, they would reach out to people, they would communicate a message that, hey, I can actually help you. There's things I, I, I know how to do or things that products and services that we have that can help transform your business and get you to where you want to go. I'm essentially capturing all of that in the feed. And then when they go to things like maybe a YouTube channel to learn more, or maybe my website to check me out, or my LinkedIn page to see my recommendations and my, my social proof, there's more video that hits them there. And so again, they're being almost like prospecting in the feed and then kind of being sold at the bottom of the funnel by the time they get to some of these landing pages. So it's it's just constantly working for you. I mean, literally I'll wake up days and, you know, oh, there's a call booked, you know, or or we're on this, we're doing this interview right now, Nick. And there could be someone that's literally watching a video on my website, or there's definitely somebody watching a video on my LinkedIn, on my TikTok, my YouTube channel. Guarantee there's somebody watching my video right this second. Now, whether or not they're a customer today or whether they book a call today or whether they're a call a customer, you know, six months from now, that depends, right? It's a little bit out of my control, but I can constantly get in front of prospects and customers um, and just provide straight value. And it, and it converts really, really well. You know, one thing I really like about video and, you know, I just take our, our use case for an example is I've been following you for years and I've been looking at your content. I've been listening to your voice and I've been seeing your face talking back to me about some things that, I can implement today to improve what I'm going to do. And so when we jumped on this, this, uh, this video, I felt like I already know you and it felt, you know, it felt comfortable and it felt like you are a trusted resource, but do, does everybody else feel that way when they're interacting with you or what does trust or how does it videos build trust in that sales cycle? Oh, for sure, man. So, I mean, one of the most common things that I get from putting out so much video content is when people get on the call with me, they say the exact same thing. They go, I feel like I already know you. Like I've been watching your videos for six months, for 12 months, for two years. You know, again, that period varies. It just depends on where someone's at in their buyer journey. But the, your ability to really connect with somebody from an emotional level in a human level on video is so much greater than you could with copy or text. And not that text and copy is bad. There's definitely a place for that. But I think about it like this, Nick. Let's say I made a hundred videos in a row and I posted them on, on social media, LinkedIn, let's say. And then me, the same person, not decided not to do the 100 videos, but I did 100 text posts in instead. So I only posted copy, right? Just written text post. 
the person who only posted a hundred text post, their audience is going to feel like, yeah, you know, a little bit about this person. Maybe they're a little bit of their style, their quirk. Maybe they got some quirks or whatnot. You kind of know their message because they're talking about things over and over and again. Maybe they're sharing some stories. So it's not like you don't know anything. But if I compare that experience to the experience of someone that had posted 100 videos in a row, you it would be totally different. You'd feel like, I know that person. I know how they speak. I know how they move their hands. I know how they talk. I know how they communicate. I can feel emotion when they're telling a story. I can see if they're getting emotional. I can see if they're laughing or having a good time. Or I feel like if I've got if I got on a call with them, I would already know them. Because that's essentially, if you think about it, a video is just the closest way to get close to a human being. It's like the one medium where it's like, is it, is, it's as close as it could possibly be to an interaction, but it's one to many, right? Like this is as close as it gets. This is for me and you, Nick, this is as close as it gets to be in real life. The only next step that we could have from here, aside from like virtual reality or some crazy stuff would be meeting in person. And if we met in person, I've met a lot of people from LinkedIn and social media in person. It's not all that different because we've had conversations or they've, we've seen each other's videos. So for me, it's like, if you think about just from a human connection, you would never date somebody or get in a serious business partner with somebody that you had just been emailing back and forth for mm -hmm. three months, right? You'd want to say, hey, let's set up a call. Why do we set up video calls? Because we can get, we connect with human beings. That's what we do. Why do we set up in-person meetings? Because we can connect with human beings on an emotional level. Right, We need to see facial expressions. We need to see nonverbals. We need to see how they react when we say certain things or what are their quirks, right? So to me, it's like very simple. Like video is just the number one medium because it allows you, it's the closest thing to be in real life with somebody. That's so, I love, you know, so I love that though, because there are a lot of thought leaders in the space that consistently put out articles and it's an article once a week or once every other week or once a month or whatever that is. And their goal is to show their thought leadership and obviously gain that SEO either through LinkedIn, their newsletter, or their website. Why are why are why are they not converting from and, and looking at the market and saying, you know what, there are differentiators? And at the end of the day, people will do business with and refer business to people you know, like and trust. Can they know me, like me, and trust me in in, in text? Hmm, maybe it might be a good step one. And then I'm going to schedule a meeting and have e either a face-to-face -face or, or a video conference. But if, if you can know, like, and trust somebody on video, then it's a game changer. So now that I know that, why are, and, and we don't have the answers, but maybe you do, but what, why don't people take that next step of stepping into that different media? Yeah. And just real quickly before that, if you look at, go look at the top 50 personal brands in entrepreneurship. What do all of them have in common? I'm talking about Gary V, Grant Cardone, Ed Milet, uh, Tom Bilyeu, Alex Hormozzi, Layla Hormozzi, just add on whoever, you just throw them all in there, right? Like they all do video content all the time. Hmm. Why? Because, because of exactly what we're talking about. I have, I, it is impossible for me to connect with an audience in a way if I'm, if I want to communicate my unique message and point of view it's almost impossible to communicate that without using video in today's day and age. At minimum, I'm going to handicap myself. I'm going to limit myself yeah. to where like, it's like, yeah, I, the person writes a lot of good stuff, but I don't really like, like I know them. I, I'm not like connected to them, right? Like I feel like if I met Alex Ramosi, Gary Vaynerchuk, Grant Cardone, I, I have a good sense for their personality, honestly, unless they're completely yeah. faking it, which I don't think they are. I really yeah. have a good sense for their personality. And just like Nick, you did to me, right? You're like, I kind of know how this guy's going to show up. I don't think he's going to like shock me, right? right? If I got on here, was like ultra serious in a suit and tie, I'd be like, hello, Nick, thank you for having me on. You'd be like, what the fuck? But it's <laughs> pretty much the same guy you're going to get in the videos is what you're yeah. going to get here. And so that's the first point. Secondly, you ask, you know, hey, why are more people not doing it? It's a couple different reasons. Like why are more people not getting on video? The number one reason is insecurities and fears. That is hands down. I've worked with hundreds of creators and hundreds and dozens and dozens and dozens of companies. And I, I mean, there are very successful CEOs, founders, business owners that are petrified to get on camera. And I think a lot of it is like, you have to put yourself out there and you're going to be judged. You know, the social media world, the LinkedIn audience, the community, you're going to be judged. And it's also something that typically most people haven't done a lot before. So it's almost like if I got to go like learn boxing, or how to shoot a, a three-pointer in the NBA. And instead of me just going and practicing and kind of learning on my own and hitting the bag, 
I got to go in front of an audience <laughs> and they're going to yeah. see every little mistake I make. They're going to see if I didn't slip that jab, you know, what happens? They're going to see if I bricked, you know, 20 shots in a row, they're going to see that. So that prevents a lot of people from getting out there and creating content as they think, oh, what if it doesn't perform? What if people make fun of me? What if it doesn't, what, what if it, you know, I get negative comments. What if my colleagues say you're making social media videos? Like, what are you fucking 14? You yeah. know, like they think all of these things, Nick, and it's all, as you probably know, it's all in their head or they think I don't have anything valuable to share, right? Like, what am I going to, I don't want to seem like a know-it-all. What am I going to share? And reality is there's a ton of things that we all have to share, but I think it really comes back to fear and insecurity. It really does. And so have you, how have you overcome that or, or was that an issue with you when you first started? It's tough, man. It's a process. And I think the, the reason it's challenging is because there's not one way to get over that, right? It's almost like some of it could come from childhood issues, right? A lot of it could come from childhood issues. It could come from, you know, your experience over the past few years. And, and maybe you had certain social media experiences or certain experiences at work that now put you in a different place where you're scared to share stuff. Cause maybe you work for a company in the past five years that when you shared stuff and it wasn't right, you got shot down. Maybe you grew up in a household where when you, you spoke up, you know, and you got shot down or when you tried to share a unique perspective and it didn't align with what everyone else thought you were, you know, kind of ostracized. Right. So there's a lot of different things. So like, I am not a therapist or a psychiatrist. I encourage people to like go deep on really, I think it starts with diagnosing and figuring out why am I so scared to put myself out there? And a lot of times, Nick, it's like, why am I letting external validation decide my outcomes and the path that I'm going to take versus the internal validation, not validation, but validation, because I believe that it comes from our core values and who we are as a person. That's how you should be evaluating yourself. And that's what builds confidence is having good core values and really living that as a person. Like that's what should make you feel good versus a video that didn't perform or a video that did perform or how much money you're making or whatever it is. Like those are all fine things. But to me, it's there's a lot of different answers to that question. It can be a lot of different things. I just think if you're in that position now, maybe it's somebody listening to this right now or watching this, explore it, right? I think you got to have a desire to want to do it in the first place. It's got to be pretty strong. There's got to be some fire inside you that says, I want to do this. But the second you start thinking about, I'm worried to put it out. What if someone says something? Why are you worrying about what other people think? In 20 years, is that person, that random person on LinkedIn, John, is he going to see you in 20 years and, and you know be there to witness you not accomplishing your goals and dreams because you didn't post that? No, they're not, right? So it's like we worried about all these people and what they're going to say, but they're not there with us every single day. They're not going to be there when we don't accomplish the things we want to accomplish because we were scared of these random people, the random people's judgment. So I think, again, you got to stop looking externally and start looking internally. What does it say about me if I put out a video? Like here's a here's a mindset shift, right? Some people say, I'm going to put out a video for the first time. What if it fails? What if it doesn't perform? What if people make fun of me? Mindset shift. I'm going to put out a video. What does that say about me and my core values? I stand for something. I believe in putting myself out there and helping other people, making an impact on other people. I believe in adding value versus just promoting myself and my products and services. I believe in being bold and going for something that, yes, is out of my comfort zone, and I'm not comfortable doing that, perfectly fine to admit. We can say that, right? Never done videos before. How would you be comfortable? How would you be good at it? You've never done it. But that says something about me as, as, my, as a person, as what I value. And that's where we have to start shifting the conversation is not to the result right away or what's gonna, what could happen in this mystical world of like everything could go wrong. Reality is none of it's probably gonna happen anyways. And start shifting it to say, bring it back to your character. What does it mean for you to post a video when you've been scared to post one in the last two months? And then what you do is you start building up these habits and the characters and the values. And then you start getting better and you start learning and you understand this works here, but this doesn't work here. Oh, okay. If I started off the video like this, I'd perform better. And pretty soon your videos are starting to perform. But to me, it comes as a long answer. But to me, it comes back to the character and the values. That's the only way I know how to describe it is like, you know, again, a lot of people have issues and we all deal with insecurities and fears. That's totally normal. It's about recognizing them and trying to shift the mindset into making it more about your values and characters versus an end result. So I, lo I love that. There's, it's it's the values and characters that 
that help our mindset shift. It is if I'm going to the gym and I, you know, a freshman in high school, I was probably a hundred pounds, five foot two, but that didn't stop me from stepping into that discomfort and uh, stop playing hockey and start running because I was, I leaned into my strengths and not my weaknesses. Uh, I, I wouldn't go to a gym right now and go to this massive, crazy gym and try to do 350 pounds. I would start with the 20 pounders and I'd start with the 25 pounders and I'd lean in and keep getting reps after reps after reps. And I could care less of what everybody else thinks about me because I have an ultimate goal. And if you keep striving for that goal, but you're focusing on those micro reps, you're going to get better. And I like that, the, the, what if, but I would, I would, I would go one step further and say, what if people hate this? What if, what if people, what if it doesn't, what if it fails? What if people are going to tell other people on how much I suck? Well, if you change that mindset and you're saying, what if it does pretty good? What if people actually like it? What if people share it and say that this is the value that I've added to them? Then you're going to double, double down on the content you're putting out because you're confident now, but you're not going to build confidence with sitting back and saying the what ifs on the negative side. You're going to build confidence by the reps that you're putting in consistently. That's it, man. Yeah. That's it. So let's say that, let's say I, I put out a, I, I'm building all these, these content, these reps, these ultimate, this video content that I'm consistently putting out. Now, what the heck do I do with it? As, as a, as an individual contributor or as an organization, there's so many people that fail as to having a content strategy, let alone a video content strategy. And so you have, you have this ultimate video content strategy that you put together, you know, maybe give them a sneak peek, a quick Pandora's box of what's behind the curtain of what people should start focusing on to build those, that strategy. Well, if you're going to build a video content strategy, and I would say a content strategy in general, I, I really like people search and ask about video content strategy, but really video is a part of the overall content strategy. And it's a big part of it, right? Because like you can do a lot of amazing things with video. And I think that should be the building block for most companies and creators, especially now. But it starts with this. It starts with looking internally, like we're going back to what we just talked about, right? So what in it, let's just say you're a company, let's say you're an individual contributor, regardless, it doesn't really matter. Things will change a little bit depending on how you're set up in the organization. If you're one person versus a hundred versus a CEO versus a, you know, somebody that's working for a company would change slightly, but regardless, you got to look internally and say, what, what is my unique point of view and perspective? You know, what do I stand for? What are my values? What are the things that I want to communicate um, openly and honestly to my audience? So you're going to look internally at you as a person and you as a company, because if you don't have a unique perspective or something to share, or you don't have opinions on things and stories, then, then what are you going to share, right? It's like, you can't share what everyone else is sharing. It's vanilla. It's boring. It's going to blend in. You've got to take a stance. You've got to have something to say, man, I think about this a little bit differently. And I'd love to communicate that with my audience. The next thing you need to do equally as important is you need to say, what, who am I targeting with my content? Who do I want to serve? with my content, you know, who are the people that I want to make an impact on? And usually that's your customers, or if it's talent you're trying to attract or whatever it might be, you need to get some insights. You need to learn what do they care about? Where do they show up? What type of content do they consume? What are their pains their desires, their dream states, their concerns or challenges or fears, you know, all of that, you got to get inside the customer's head or your audience's head. Once you got those two things, then you can kind of start going down. Okay. We've got that now. What, what, where do we want to be at, and what's kind of the content pillars that we're going to build off of? So you're putting together, putting together your your pillar content, which is just what are maybe the one to three things that you're going to talk about consistently that you want to be known for. Because if you get on there and you start talking about a bunch of random stuff, it's going to be hard to position you as an expert in your industry if that's what you're going for, right? Or let's say a thought leader or whatever it might be, right? Um, so you want to think about what are the core things. And for me, for example, it'd be video content, social media, LinkedIn, right? Those are like three pretty lasered in topics that I can cover a lot of things with, but they're all things that I'm going to be known for edutainment content, right? Video content. I'm sure if someone asked you, Nick, like, what is Alex known for? You'd be like, definitely video content, edutainment, probably LinkedIn, right? So something along the lines of that, because I talk about it all the time. 
And so figure out what you're going to talk about your message based on your internal deep dive and your customer insights. And then once you got the messaging down, okay, I'm going to talk about these topics and subjects and that kind of stuff. And they'll evolve over time. Then you got to think about what are the content channels that I need to be posting this content on? So, you know, is it LinkedIn? Is it TikTok? Is it YouTube? Is it uh, website content? Is it newsletter? Is it blogs? You know, and ideally it's all of that at some point, you know, but you got to start somewhere. So if you're an individual contributor and your customers and audience are crawling all over LinkedIn and you haven't really done any content or video before, might not be a bad idea to start there, figure that platform out and then start to migrate to other platforms. But that's the basics of it. When you get past that, you get into, you know, content training and fundamentals and tactical stuff, right? So it's like, you know, sure, <clears throat> you got to know how to create good quality content. You got to know how to start a video off that is intriguing, that creates curiosity, that has a hook in it. You got to know how to deliver a good message, you know, concisely, right? In a good amount of time, but still full of value. Um, those are some of the tactical stuff. And then beyond that, it's building workflows and processes. Those are huge. The number one reason people don't stay consistent with content lack of process, lack of consistency, or they got in their own head. But most of the time they don't have a process. So it's like they're creating a video today that they need to post tomorrow or it's Friday night and it's like, oh, I don't have anything to post for Monday. Well, that's a tough spot to be in because things are always going to come up. You're going to get busy. You're going to have something that came up at work and life, family. So your ability to get weeks ahead, like I cannot post a video for the next, or I cannot create a video for the next two months. And I'd still have video content to post every single day, every single week because I built out a video content machine that runs not without me, but that is able to run for a while without me, right? So I got to keep recording videos, but I've got now where I've got this bank of content built up, YouTube videos, shorts, LinkedIn, TikToks. It's built up now to where I could stop recording for the next two months. I would drain that down. Yeah. So I wouldn't do that necessarily, but I can take a week off. I can get busy and not have to worry about it, right? So that's really the place that you want to get to, uh, that's kind of the goal that you want to get to as a creator. So you touched on the topic just a little bit. You you grazed by about 120 miles an hour, but it's the concept of edutainment. Uh, yes, for, I those do, yeah. who, for those who don't know, uh, what in the world is edutainment? Edutainment content is taking an educational message or an inspiring message, something of substance, and it's combining it with entertainment. So what does that look like? It could look like a lot of different things, right? And what I try to tell people is like, you may think of a skit video. I've done a lot of back and forth skit videos. And you've seen these on social media, if you're on social media, right? Where it's like, you know, it's one person talking to another person, they're going back and forth. There's some humor, but there's also learning lessons and maybe some substance to it. Um, there's also very simple ways, right? Where you're recording a video and maybe you change the angles. You come in at a unique angle or you show scenery or a backdrop, right? I just did a video the other day where I was like, you think it's too late to be on LinkedIn? And I point and like, there's a LinkedIn logo right there, right? That we added in editing, right? So it could be something as simple as you saying, like, let's say you're talking about, I'm talking about making boring content. And I'm like, don't, if your content's so boring, you know, your content's so boring, you're putting people to sleep. And then I just do a quick scene where I'm like, huh, what, you know? And so it's like, it's an interruption. It's a pattern interruption yeah. or pattern disruption in the video that keeps people smiling emotionally engaged and wanting to keep watching the video. So what you do is you, you hook people in through the edutainment, but you really retain people all the way through the video. It's a super powerful method to use and they convert very high. If you actually make it edutainment and not entertain, <clears throat> excuse me, and not entertainment because just entertainment, they may laugh and have fun and it's cool video, but they may not connect you as a person that can solve their problem, right? Solve their business challenge, be a be an expert that they would go to to actually buy from where edutainment does because it still has an educational or inspirational message. It just, you just put it in an entertaining box. Yeah, I love that. And you even have something called the GEMS framework that kind of walks through that edutainment and what I will let everybody else know is just search for his content, go to, go to LinkedIn. I think it was the latest post, even that says gems framework. So take a peek at that. Uh, but you know, when it comes to technology, when it comes to differentiating in the marketplace, there's a ton of trends. There's a, tr a ton of innovation that's always going to hand happen around building that personal brand. The thing that I've seen that, or that individuals fail at, is that they've been with the company for 15, 20, 30 plus years. And I saw there was three guys specifically that I met with and 
uh, you know, 2020 happened and they no longer had a job, they got ripped. And they're like, what do I do? What, what type of brand do I build when I only had the relationships that I built internally? And so as you consistently try to find of what are the trends that you're seeing in the marketplace and how do you stay on top of that personal brand and how should individuals and maybe even organizations kind of focus more on that video content creation and what are the things that they should be looking for and, and uh, what are you kind of leaning into and where do you see it in the next, uh, you know, one to two years? So video trends. Um <clears throat> You know, you learn a lot by just watching consumer behavior, right? So like I, if you look at my evolution of a video creator, I went from in the beginning, I was creating like square videos <laughs> for, for LinkedIn basically exclusively, right? And then what I started to notice happen, and honestly, if you just pay attention and look and you're on these platforms and you're not just like in a blind rabbit hole of consumption, right? Where it's like, you can get on TikTok and Instagram and be like, what? And then like 20 minutes pass and you're like, oh shit, where, where am I at? You know, like you can get in that rabbit hole, but I'm saying consume intentionally, right? So like when you're scrolling, what I do when I scroll and look for stuff is I'm like, why did that video work so well? Why did this one not? Ooh, I, I noticed how they changed the scene every like half a second. And then they went into this or instead of, telling me they showed it to me. That's an interesting idea, right? And then you start to notice different things. But like back to me, I was making LinkedIn square videos for a long, the one by ones. That's like what the video dimensions were on LinkedIn. You probably remember that, right? And then I started to notice like this short form vertical video takeover. And it was like 2020, 2021, it was really starting to get bigger. And I had a choice to make. I said, you know, I could ignore this, I could pretend that it just, it's not gonna, not gonna be a thing, not gonna exist. TikTok's going nowhere, Instagram reels, you know, <clears throat> but I didn't really feel that was reality. I didn't feel like that was real. I felt like short form video, vertical video was gonna play a major role in a content strategy and in, and in social media in general. And sure enough, it obviously is and, and was. So I made that adjustment, right? I saw things coming. I, I played with, so that's one side of it, right? One side of it is like, just watching, just paying attention, right? How do you know anything's coming? You got to pay attention. You got to watch. You got to get curious. You got to ask questions. You got to consume intentionally. The other side of it is you got to be able to innovate. You got to be able to try things that maybe you haven't seen a lot of before. Maybe you don't know if it's going to work or not, right? I mean, I've done a lot of different edutainment videos. I didn't get these ideas from watching all these other amazing edutainment creators. Let's be honest. There's not that many, right? Definitely not on TikTok or on LinkedIn, and on TikTok, it's, there's a lot of talented people, but it's a lot of entertainment and less edutainment, right? So for me, it was carving out that edutainment uh, niche on LinkedIn. I didn't know if that was going to work. I mean, I didn't know if people were going to think I'm stupid or they were not going to take me seriously. I mean, I had some people in the beginning that were like, this is blasphemy. This is LinkedIn, <laughs> damn it. Edutainment content doesn't belong on this platform. Mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but, but that was very far and few between, to be honest. Most people were very receptive of it and they appreciated that humor is intelligence having fun. And they knew that I had a good message. I was delivering it in a humorous way and in a fun way, in an engaging way that people actually wanted to watch the videos instead of scroll right past them. So I think it's a combination of really paying attention what's, to what's happening on, you know, the landscapes of social media, pop culture, you know, what's happened, the trends that are, that are you're witnessing just from a day-to-day -day standpoint, if you pay attention, <clears throat> but it's also not getting too wrapped up in that where you're not trying new things that go beyond what's being done. So whether that's a video series, whether that's edutainment, whether that's just trying a new concept, you know, a new type of podcast, whatever it might be, you got to be willing to test and try different things. And some are going to work, you know, a lot of them aren't, but you never know until you start trying. So it sounds like you're not afraid to fail. That's what I hear. You can't be, dude. You can't be an innovator and a pioneer and someone that I think, you know, grows a successful business if you're not, if you're scared to fail. It's just impossible because you're going to fail a lot and all the time. And you're going to have certain things that you put a lot of effort into. Speaking of content videos, you're going to have certain things that you put a lot of effort and time and energy into. And you're like, this should be good. And then it does nothing. And you're like, ah. <laughs> it's like, and then you'll have things that you're like, don't think are going to be good. You almost didn't post them and they perform really well. So it's like, it's impossible to predict the performance of a video. Um, but you can study what works over time and what doesn't. 
So I can actually look at the things that I'm going to post engage to a certain degree on how they're going to perform and be pretty accurate, to be honest, at this point, four years in, I can't tell you exactly like how it's going to be, but I can say, yeah, this is probably going to do well on TikTok. Not maybe not as well as LinkedIn, or this is going to do really well on LinkedIn, or th this video is going to hit on YouTube, I think a little extra hard. You can get it down to where you've got certain, you know, you've built skills up and you have a good understanding because you've posted over a thousand videos. Yeah, you notice the trends and what's going to work and what's not. But when you're trying something new, it's fresh, it's new. So, you know, yeah. again, it goes back to being willing to get outside of your comfort and say, this is who I am as a person. I, I pride myself on being able to put myself out there and be the guinea pig. You know, like I'll take the punishment, I'll take the punches, I'll take the losses because I know it's going to help me get better. And that's going to help a thousand other people get better with me. Yeah. That's so cool. And so I, I gave the hook at the very beginning that just said, here is the reason why you're going to be listening throughout the rest of this and why you should be following this fella. And he did not disappoint. He just gave you an undergrad four-year degree <laughs> in 35 minutes. So if you want to get a master's degree in what he does, follow his content, sign up for his newsletter, go to his socials, find, like, share, comment, do your thing. And uh, Alex, it's been a pleasure, man. Uh, how else can my people follow you? Man, you know, definitely LinkedIn for sure for day to day. I'm probably on LinkedIn more than any other platform, but YouTube is a good one. And um, I've also got the content library on the website, but YouTube is a good one if you want the deep dives. So I go, you know, maybe eight to 15 minute per video and it's really in depth. And I mix in some edutainment, of course, in there too. But it's, it's, that's where I would go if you're like, I really want to learn, like he said, edutainment, he said, LinkedIn, he said this, I want to know like way more about this. You go to YouTube, uh, LinkedIn is kind of the shorter form content that will get you excited about things. You'll learn things, but for the really deep dives, YouTube's the channel. So the people that, that hear you, what you're saying, and they love what you're doing, how do people work with you and who are the right people to work with you? Yeah. So our offerings is, is two core offerings. One, we do strategy training and coaching with companies. <clears throat> Typically it's companies doing a few million in revenue up to 50 million, potentially up to hundred. It's like that small to medium sized market. And we come in and we help them develop their strategies. So what we lay out the entire custom strategy for their company, and then we help them execute. We help train their people. We help them hire the content team that they need to hire. If they need to hire, they may have somebody internally that we just need to train up the speed. Um, so we set all of that up for them. That's one side. The other side is we have video editors that are trained and some of the best editors on planet earth. And so if you're like in a position where like, you're going to be doing a lot of video, but maybe we don't want to hire somebody internally because it's going to cost us an arm and a leg, but we also don't want to try out like chance our luck on Fiverr, Upwork, or some of these other sites. We want someone that's proven and ready to go day one. Then we will basically almost as a recruiting company, supply you a full-time video editor, but they're managed by us. They're paid through us. We offer benefits, health the dental vision, all that good stuff. Um, they're highly trained and ready to go day one and you get the supporting of us behind it. So it's, it's a more of a proven solution day one versus having to go out and hunt down somebody, train them and go through all that stuff. But those are the two kind of the two core offerings that we have now. And I have another business, but I won't get into that. Yeah, it sounds like another episode. <laughs> yeah. Stay tuned for episode two. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, I appreciate your time, man. And, uh, you know, like I said, either offline or online, you know, double down on what you're doing because you're doing some awesome stuff. Appreciate it, brother. Awesome talking with you. Thanks, Nick.